What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube modeling community? This is Hooterville75 with Midnight the Ferocious Sissy from the Open Air Model Shop, bringing you another video through the power of the internet. And in today's video, I am going to do a final reveal of the 1 8 scale Mobius Batman kit that I am building for the Amazing Scale Modelers batman group build being hosted by the youtube community's own dirt pit i wanted to get in this because dirt's a good buddy of mine and i'm a semi big batman fan so it was win-win but this is the kit i built it is a 1 8 scale mobius batman on the rock ledge of the bat cave so stay tuned i'll pull this aside and show you what we got there she is fellas to say this kit was not troublesome is a understatement because it fought me all the way in many ways um i call it what I like to refer to it as what Papa Dan from Papa Dan's Models 2 says. A three-footer. From three foot away and further, it looks beautiful. But once you get on top of it, you can tell where I've made the mistakes. I'll use my little pointer here. Um, right up here in the chest, I did a little touch-up with a, a brush. And you can tell, if you get way up close to it, you can tell by the brush marks that... Well, you can't really see it on the camera, but you can tell to look at it that there was touch-up done. Uh, the seam lines on the back of the legs here were continuous fits. I sanded and sanded and sanded and filled and filled, sanded again. It didn't matter how much I sanded. When I came back the next day after waiting overnight, those damn seam lines appeared again. So finally, I just got tired of it, and I said, to hell with it. I'm just primering it and seeing what happens. And by damned if I didn't primer it, and it just took care of them right away. It, went, it disappeared, like, boom, instantly. I was so mad. I spent so much time sanding and filling on that. But uh, everything else turned out pretty good. The rock ledge right here, um, that was a first for me. Try to zoom up a little closer to it. Um, basically what I did was painted it the brown base color and then used a black wash to get in the crevices and depth of the details. So the black that you see is all a black wash. Basically what I did was use the Flory Models wash, Flory Models black wash, and it is a clay based wash. So I applied it like a sludge wash and then just removed with a wet paper towel the excess that I didn't want on it after letting it dry overnight. So it worked out pretty good. I'm really happy with that ledge. Um, I painted it with an enamel, tester's enamel, and it is number 0611 flat brown. And I'll tell you why I used this light color because a I knew putting the black wash on it was going to darken the tone a little bit and as you can see here all my swatches that I used for testing colors let me find the browns right here all the browns that I used you could tell just by matching it up with the pictures were going to be too dark before applying the black wash. So I used this one right here, which is the flat brown, and I was worried it was going to be a bit light and I was going to have to mix it with one of these over here to get the darker color that I wanted. But after I put the black wash on, like I said with the Flory Models wash right here, it, it turned out just perfect. So I was really proud of that. That's the first time I ever used this wash here, any wash period. I mean, that was the first wash I ever applied on anything. So I'm really excited to get into some different weathering weathering processes on different kits as, 
Evan, my buddy Panzermeister36, has really been teaching me a lot about weather and tanks and armor, so I'm really excited to get on the next build, which is going to be a monogram tank, an old monogram tank. So, um, the paint, the name tag, that name tag, to say the least, was almost one of the worst fits I had because getting that yellow to match up with the black and not having a yellow on the black or black on the yellow was almost impossible. But I just used the regular testers and enamels for gloss black and gloss yellow for that. So that was pretty easy. Um, the flush color that I used, that's another thing here. Um, pull this a little closer, maybe you can see it. I don't know if you can see the eyes. That was the first time I ever painted eyes of any sort. I started off with a gray, like a gray black color and then put dabs of white on top of that and then the eyeballs on top of the white pupils and that's the end result I got. So, I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but it could have been a lot worse. You know, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. And also with the Batman decal that you see on his chest right here, um, I ended up, there was an indent with a little circle on his chest, but I ended up shaving that off because it stuck out way too far and just didn't look scale. So I sanded it off, sanded it way off. I mean, that's about all the further I could go before it flat spotted and then just put the decal on his chest where the symbol used to be and went from there. So his got his batarang there, the black batarang tied to the rope, ready to throw if needed. He's got his cape. Let's see if I can spin this around without knocking it over. He's got his blue cape on. That is a like a royal blue. So everything's royal blue but the gray. That's a light gray and a royal blue. The yellow belt and the gold belt buckle. So, uh, the blue that I used was this. I have an E on it because it's empty, so I need to get some more. It's a blue FS number 15044 by Aquaeus Hobby Keller, number 326. And it is for United States Air Force Thunderbirds. But after doing the test... After doing the test here, that's the that's the blue that came out the best, so that's what I went with right here. The gray that I used was again a Quaz Hobby Keller light gray, used for Japanese special defense cockpits. So it's a flat gray, flat light gray, and. The gray process, to say the least, was a chore and a half because I had so many grays and getting one to match. There you can see all the grays that I tested. So, <laughs> the one that I went with was the one that matched the best. I believe it's this one right here. I'm not sure without going back through and looking again, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So, there we go. That is the Batman Mobius 1 8th. Kit number 950, Batman figure for Dirt Pits, Batman group build through Amazing Scale Modelers. So I'd like to thank Dirk for including me in this, asking me to participate. I'd like to thank him for joining me to be a member of Amazing Scale Modelers. It's a good group. If you haven't checked them out, go on Facebook and check them out. It's Amazing Scale Modelers. So sorry it took me so long to get this finished, but just life got in the road. You know, hot water heater. My daughter's basketball team made the state playoffs. That was a two or three week process traveling across state for games. Uh, we're into softball now. And worst and foremost, my better half and I have split. So we have separated. So that's a story of its own, but it is what it is and life goes on. So next i am going to be working on my classic plastic 101 tribute build and i will do a video later tonight hopefully of that i am going to be building the old monogram m Patton m48 a2 tank 
So stay tuned for that. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you're new to the channel. I try to respond to all comments. If you really like what you share, seen, hit the share button so all your friends can see it. Thanks everybody for tuning in and we'll catch everybody on the next video. Till then for now, this is Hooterville 75 with Midnight the Ferocious Sissy checking out from the open air model shop. Oh yeah, one more thing. Tom, Rambler69, and Rick from the Heartbeat Model Shop. We need to have a little talk here, friends. Uh, Jack and Cletus and Midnight, I believe, are just up to a little something-something that's no good. So, we, we need to have a discussion about that as soon as possible, guys. So, I'll get at each of you later. See you now.